Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be checking out Hackintosh on the Geekcom IT8 mini PC. So let's get started. Now, before we begin, I have done a review on this unit, which is the Geekcom IT8, and I'll leave a link on the top left for you guys if you want to see all the specs and everything. But just for a quick rundown, this is running an Intel 8th generation i5 with 16 gigs of RAM and 512 megabytes of internal storage. Now, to get Hackintosh up and running for the Geekcom, it does require a modified BIOS, which I'll leave all the links down in the description below where you can get yours. Now, Geekcom actually sent me the modified BIOS so it could actually activate some of the stuff that Mac OS needs in order for it to run properly so after updating the BIOS through Windows you're all set to go now they also included an image for me where I could actually pop into a USB and boot from there now this is a vanilla install of Mac OS and after the BIOS is modified and the USB is created it's just a matter of running through the installation it's super easy straightforward there's not much to it so have you ever seen my other videos on Hackintosh before or even in general done this before it's just very straightforward create the disk and install it on that disk the whole install process took about 30 minutes or so on this and when you're done you are presented with this desktop so here we are on the main desktop and I did take a couple of screenshots of benchmarks that I ran with Geekbench but everything does run on this now we are using Big Sur and there is a way to upgrade it to um, the latest version. I forgot what the name of it is, but right now it is on Big Sur. I kind of want to keep it on Big Sur because there's a lot of applications that only works on this um, platform and going up might not work as well. But mainly I wanted to build this to use as a regular desktop, but also for Blue Bubbles. If you never heard of Blue Bubbles, it's a software that allows you to transfer all your iMessages to an Android phone because most of my friends and family uses iPhone. Having iMessage on my Android is pretty cool and you could do, achieve this by building a Hackintosh. Now, I do have messages working. And if I sign in over here, you will see. And here we go. I don't have any messages going through as a new account, but yeah, messages does open up and it does run. Now there are a couple of ways to achieve the iMessage and FaceTime to work properly, which is spoofing your MAC address so it's a proper Macintosh Mac. Or you could do what I did is install one of these Wi-Fi dongles that is official from Mac and it has the Mac addresses that allow you to use the devices. Then you actually have to modify some of the SMI BIOS, um, serial ID numbers. It's a huge list of things to get it to work, but it does work on Hackintosh and you could get uh, iMessage and FaceTime working on here. Now, if, if you guys are very interested, I'll leave a link down in the description below to a guide that I followed. But if you guys wanna see how to do it and you want me to make a video on it, let me know down in the comments below because it's not something I generally do on this type of channel. Now, while everything is working, I'm gonna show you some benchmarks. And the first benchmark we have, we ran on Geekbench, which is the multi-geek score. Single core is 933, multi-core is 3664. And I believe if I was to, actually I could probably Google it. Geekbench Mac score. Let's see. Uh, from here, yep, there you go. Let's see where it falls in. So this is the single core. All right, we got the 933, all right. And if we go down 933, since this is i5 8th gen, um, it falls right around this area here. The Mac Pro, 2015, which is i7 Gen 4, or the i7 8th Gen. It's like right under here for the single core benchmark. And in the multi-core score, I, we got 3664. So 3664 will fall right under here, which is, yeah, about the same thing. Uh, the Core i5 8257. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I mean, the benchmarks represent what the CPU is and it actually reflects the same thing off the site. So that's what we got for the multi-core and the single core benchmark scores. And we also did another one, which is OpenCL. And we got the OpenCL score of 3, 000, well, 7,339. I don't know what to compare this to. Uh, it's Intel GPU, but it is working. And I'm actually able to play games on here. So if I was to close this out, I'm gonna show you a game that I installed, which is Art of Rally. It runs actually pretty well. Um, there's not many, uh, obviously you guys know, Mac OS is not a gaming PC. So there's not many games that you could install on here or not many games that I own that I could install on here. So I'm gonna pop over to Free Roam 
the fan is starting to kick up now. Before it was completely silent, but because we're using the GPU now, these things are kicking in. The loading process is pretty quick. I'm gonna lower the volume to the music. Begin stage. And there we have it. I'm not very good at this game. Maybe I should start trying to get better at this game, but I love rally games. But in general, it does work. Let's see if I could pass some bridge without dying. Why is this game, why is this car so nimble? It is so hard to drive. There you go, change some camera angles. Let's make some left turn. That didn't work out very well. Ooh. Wow, there's a lot of camera angles I could use. Anyway, yeah, game works. That means the graphic card works. So a lot of other things would be working since the graphic card does work. Then we also have our iTunes. Um, iTunes does, like I'm signed into iTunes, so I can download applications from iTunes. Uh, I don't run, I haven't ran into any problems with this yet. Uh, so far, the only thing you have to worry about is getting Clover to install properly, but that wasn't really much of an issue. And trying to get the iTunes working properly would, you know, takes a little bit of skill, but you, I, like I said, I'll leave a link down in the description below to uh, what applications you need, mainly which is the Clover configurator with, to generate the, the serial numbers and all the other stuff. Uh, hack tools to look up some other information. So these are the two main tools that you really need to get the um, operating system to be you know official so you could use all this other stuff browser itself works if i was to go into youtube.com nova spirit tech video works right off the bat i am going to mute that but you could see full screen everything works pretty good no problems with uh, running videos you get the idea. So yeah, everything does work. Anyway, that is it for this build. If you guys are interested in getting a small little $500 mini PC to build Hackintosh on there to run basically Mac or do your Xcode or something like that, this is actually not a bad deal, especially how stable it is running on this platform. If you guys are interested in a full walkthrough on how to get this installed, even though I'm leaving all the files underneath, let me know down in the description below because it wasn't really hard, but if you guys really need a walkthrough, I, I can get that out. If you guys have any questions about this, hit me up down in the comments below or in Discord. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.